Which soft drink comes to mind at the mention of traffic? That's right, La Casera. This unique apple drink dared to challenge the status quo when there were basically only Coca-Cola and Pepsi dominating the market in 2001. La Casera has a lot of firsts. It is the first to introduce plastic on the go bottles in Nigeria. It is the first ever soft drink to be offered in a pet bottle in Nigeria. It is also the only carbonated soft drink with 5% real apple juice and has been the number one selling apple drink in the market since 2001. Do you want to know how the brand became so popular and successful? Or if the La Castera and Gala combo was the outcome of an intentional marketing strategy? Well, get all the juice from La Casera exclusively on Live with Linda. Alright, so today we are going to be speaking with La Casera, a brand that you all already know. Um, one of the things that excited me about them is the fact that they are like an original and they came into the market when, when the whole um, competi competition was stiff between Coca-Cola and Pepsi. But somehow, right, um, La Casera was able to creep into the market and then stole the love and admiration of a lot of people. And so today we want to find out how they were able to achieve that that's number one number two we also want to find out all their marketing strategy all the little things they did behind the scene for example the whole gala and la casera combo was it engineered was it an intentional marketing strategy those are the sort of things you're going to find out today and like i said of course we also want to know why the brand is so loved and how they were able to grow it to the level that it is today Okay, so soon I'm going to um, ask um, the director of marketing um, to join me, Mr. Emmanuel Agu. I am very excited. Let me see. I think he's already waiting to join this chat. Uh, please, if you want to ask any question, I would plead with you to please put it in the question tab below. Screen. Um, you can write your comments on the screen. That's welcomed as well. And, but if you have any questions, put them in the question tab below so that I can be able to um, read them afterwards so that Mr. Agu can answer the question. Yes, yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. Are you on, on phone? <laughs> no, I've just dropped the call. Okay, great. Mr. Emmanuel Agu, it's nice to finally meet you. How have you been today? I'm good. Um, happy to to meet you too, and excited to be in this um, Insta Life program. Me too. Me too. Me too. Have you had La Casera today? <laughs> you can see. Oh, great! Happy. <laughs> Interesting. Good. Um, it's nice to meet you, like I said. So um, I'd like to know you, before we go straight into the chat, I'd like to get to know you. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, Mr. Emmanuel? Okay. Um, my name is Emmanuel Agu. Um, I've been a marketing practitioner for the last 19 years. So, 19 years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 right. Great. <laughs> I started my marketing marketing career in two thousand and one as a management wow. trainee with uh, Guinness Nigeria, and then I rose through the rank to a senior management uh, position. In ten years, I worked across different uh, brands and categories in Guinness. And then left Guinness okay. as the marketing manager for Laga and Malt before mm. I moved to Nigeria Bureau. So okay. I did um, I did from approximately six years in Nigerian Bureau, where I also manage uh, portfolios like Life Laga, Legend, Tuboking, Williams, Goldberg, Gouda, etc. So from mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Nigerian Beauty, I moved to Lakatera as a group marketing director. So in total, I spent oh, wow. uh, 19 years in this marketing communication industry. Great. That's interesting. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to see why Lakatera was able to creep into the market because you already know all the secrets. You've worked with the major, some of the major players in the industry before you joined Lakatera. So that's interesting to know. Uh, thank you. For joining us today um guys like i said if you are watching um uh, please if you have any questions leave them in the question tab below and today la casera iman mr emmanuel and his team has decided to bless some of us with products you're going to get free la casera products today and <laughs> free la casera products today and um, a lot of other branded um goodies that we have in store so please um stay tuned if you have any questions, ask them. Uh, have any comments, leave them on the screen. Just generally engage with us so that we'll know how you think or what you're thinking. Hello, Z Graphics. Welcome. Jago says you are a legend, Mr. Algo. <laughs> Can you see his comments? He said you are a legend. <laughs> all right, great. So let's get started now. Let's go straight into business. Uh, first of all, I found out that La Casera means um, a drink from home. It's a Spanish word, actually. It's a Spanish phrase. So it got me thinking, as I said, doing my research, and I, I found out that there is actually a La Casera Espanol <laughs> in Spain. So is there any connection between La Casera in Spain and the one in Nigeria? Yes, there is, because... Um, okay. La Casera, like you rightly said, um, is a Spanish word, it means a drink from home. So, the La Casera Nigeria is a franchise from the La Casera Spain. Okay. So, it's a franchise brand here, and that is what it is. Okay, so. Just like um, you have a great franchise, franchise business and franchise brand all over the world. So, La Casera is from Spain, is a Spanish okay. brand, and then okay. it's being sold here. Okay. All right, great. So uh, is it like a Coca-Cola? Like, okay, because I know, is there any, co what I mean yeah. connection, like, um, okay, so there's still the mother brand and offspring relationship between La Casera Nigeria and La Casera in Spain? No. So, no. You, know, you know, in uh, in franchise business, you can take a franchise from a, pro from a company and then you can pay off and own it okay. exclusively okay. Both, so within a geographical space. Okay, all right. So I get it now. So even though it originated in Spain, La Casera Nigeria is a wholly Nigerian brand. It has nothing to do Correct. with the mother company as of now. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely okay, great. correct. Okay, great. So uh, let's take time out to try to understand the brand from ground up, how it started and all of that. Uh, so let's start with your slogan. I love this drink. What inspired that slogan? I love this drink was inspired by the consumers. It's the word we took from the consumers when the brand was introduced in Nigeria. So because okay. it, is very, it is very unique, on its own, being the okay. first apple apple product, apple carbonated soft drink in Nigeria. So it's kind of like um, a different kind of soft drink that people witnessed when it was launched. Yeah. You know, that created a, a different kind of sensation in their taste board. So we are all used to the traditional FMCG uh, carbonated soft mm -hmm. drink until like a entered into the space. Mm -hmm. So Nobody would have envisaged an Apple product. And here you have uh, an Apple product in, in a CSD format. So when it was introduced, uh, people who tested it, who drank it, kept on saying, I love this drink, I love this drink, I love this drink. <laughs> and then uh, the, the team managing the brand at that point then took it yeah. as a pay offline because it comes from the consumers. You know in marketing that... Um, Pay offline can be inspired by the brand team who creates the of brand course. or they can yeah. actually take it from how the consumers feel about the brand. And that was how the history came about. 
Okay, great. Um, it's, it's nice to know, uh, and I don't think everybody can agree that really um, it's believable when you say that the slogan was taken from the consumers because a lot of people love La Castera, and we're going to come to the reason why they love it in a minute. But first of all, I want to know how the market was um, when La Castera was launched. Um, it was, I think you came into the market in 2001, 2000, Jotna, that's the parent company was established. And in 2001, you introduced yeah. La Casera. So when La Casera was introduced into the market, what was the competition like? And why were you guys inspired to bring La Casera into the, a, a totally different product when the likes of Pepsi and um, Coca-Cola were dominating the market? Yeah, innovation is one of the things that causes disruption in the marketplace. So many brands have entered mm -hmm. into the Nigerian automated uh, drink space and they did not survive the big multinational. Yeah. I can mention a lot of them. I know of Crush. I know <laughs> of so many of them that came in and then they suffered and suffered hemorrhage. And, yeah. you know, they were taken yeah. out by the by the big uh, FMPG corporate. But um, La Casera came into a market with a, a unique innovation that uh, got the, the big FMPG multinationals thinking. And then okay. it, the brand left them with no option than to respond. But then in responding, you have to change your system of working. And what do I mean? La Casera did not just come into the, into the FMCG space in the okay. normal packaging format that okay. carbonated soft drink is known in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Carbonated mm -hmm. soft drink has been packaged in Nigeria in a returnable glass bottle. What okay. we call the RGP. It could be 35 CL, it could be 33, it could be 50 CL or whatever uh, skew format it is. But like I said, I got into the market with mm -hmm. a pet bottle. So okay. being the first carbonated soft drink in pet, you know, like I said, I pioneered that innovation to enter into the market space with a pet bottle. So, and in this pet bottle, it was able to penetrate the market because in the sense that the uh, you can drink it on the go without okay. having the burden of returning your glass bottle. <laughs> you can open the drink, drink it halfway, close mm. it again, mm -hmm. and drink at your convenience again, yeah. which is not yeah. very similar with bottle because the bottle, once you pop up the crown, is either you finish it or you mm -hmm. throw away the remaining content. Yeah. So, like I said, I pioneered the innovation in PET mm. to be the first carbonated top drink in Nigeria to come in a PET bottle. So, mm. and being in PET, it offers Nigeria the ease and the convenience of buying the product without having to make deposits of crates and bottles. You know how this is, has been in the past. When you want to go and buy a bottle of uh, CSD in your favorite outlet, yeah. you go with a bottle. Yeah. You give them a bottle and then you take a bottle filled with the content. But in this case, you just have to buy it and you go away with it. So that convenience that, like I said, offered the consumers, it offered mm -hmm. them convenience in terms of tech, then it offers them the convenience in terms of uh, sessionability. That is your ability to drink and then pause, and then go back to your drink again, because when you drink it, you cover the cup, and then you can yeah. come back to it. But yeah. those uh, opportunities or those uh, convenience was not available with the RGB, the returnable glass bottle. And then again, okay. it offers them the opportunity for you to drink it on the go. So imagine being on traffic where you are sweating inside the yellow bus, and then you want to drink your favorite TSD. I, I, I mean, the ones that are on the, on the bottle packaging. How will the yeah. hawker sell it to you? Are you, going, are you expecting to be walking 
going to your office with a bottle in your bag so that when you are thirsty, you hand over a bottle to a hawker and then you pick up a bottle filled with content. So like I said, I provided yeah. that uh, innovation and provided that opportunity for people to have convenience on the go. And in that way, it was a novel innovation in the market space. And what makes this uh, innovation very welcoming is that uh, it liberalized the retail trade. Completely okay. liberalized it. Like I said, I will be 20 years in the Nigerian marketing space by 2021, that is next yeah. year. But I tell you the innovation pioneered by this product and by Jobna liberalized the carbonated soft drink space in Nigeria. Because prior to now, for you to even become a distributor with any of these big uh, multinational corporates, you see that I'm very mm. careful not to be mentioning names of brands here because uh, I, I also <laughs> don't want people to, you know, to use my brands as a, a, a case study <laughs> in what I'm trying to do. So the liberalization of the retail trade that was created by the innovation pioneered by Lacassera is one of the things that also made it a game changer in, in the carbonated soft drink industry. Why? Because okay. prior to now, for you to, become, for you to become a distributor, you must have the necessary work mm -hmm. At least you must have the capital to purchase close to 1,000 crates, mm -hmm. empties, and, uh, you know, empties and bottles that yeah. the company will now have to come and exchange for liquid yeah. content, yeah. you know? And then you must have a huge space where these things are going to be stacked. So, so being yeah. a distributor is like being a big, a big somebody. You are very big if you're a distributor in those days. You deal with uh, the big multinationals. So, and you see the way they, they allocate the distribution zone Maybe you are in Ikeja, there's only one distributor in Ikeja. Servicing all the outlets in Ikeja, one distributor in, in, in the island and stuff like that. So being a distributor is a big deal. But when Lacassera entered into the retail landscape in 2001 with pet innovation, that uh, being very proud of, of being a distributor or making a distributor a big deal becomes something that is very much liberalized. Anyone can become a distributor. Anyone can become a dealer. You don't yeah. need to amass so much um, war chest to do distributorship business. And that is why you can see at the nook and crannies of your neighborhood, you see people doing businesses with uh, pet bottles instead of the returnable glass bottles. So it offers people a very big opportunity to, you know, to do businesses. And it also stimulates small and medium scale enterprises because so many people that are in the drinks businesses today would not have been in the business today if not for the innovation driven by La Catera, by introducing pets mm. in the carbonated soft drink format in Nigeria. So it liberalized it. And then it gives okay. opportunity for mom and dad to do business with a carbonated soft drink in Nigeria. And the moment Lacassara got into this space, of course, you know, uh, the thing, when the paradigm shifts, everyone returns back to zero. So when the yeah. tech innovation became successful, it was not murdered, it could not be killed by the big uh, FMCG corporate. Everybody now started adopting the innovation around the pet technology to mm -hmm. do their drink in, uh, in pet bottle. And today, you will see that almost every CSD brands in Nigeria, as much as some are in bottle, but they are in pets. And I can tell you categorically, pet bottle dominate the CSD space as we speak now. So you see more yes. pet bottles than you see bottles, returnable glass bottle in yeah. the CSD space. So we are pioneered those innovations and we're heavily rewarded for being the first in that area. Okay, so if I get you correctly, um, one of the ways that you were able to fight competition was that you put the customers first. First of all, you made sure that 
the drink was convenient for them. You took convenience into consideration when creating the drink for the for the consumers and also for the distributors because before La Casera came, it was a big deal before you can be a distributor. But with the introduction of the pet bottles, it was easy for the consumers to buy and consume the drink. It was also easy for distributors and sellers to be able to um, get access to soft drinks and then start selling. So that actually helped your market to boom. So innovation was yep. the core. Yeah. Great. Um, I think that that's that's interesting. So um, how did it? How did the penetration happen? Right? Is it because you offer this convenience and this innovation, people just like naturally gravitated towards La Casera? Or were there some sort of strategy that you put in place in order to recruit these distributors? Especially because I know that for a time, it was just La Casera that was the king of the traffic in Lagos and all of other parts of Nigeria. How did that happen? Was that an intentional strategy or did this just happen because your drink was convenient and was um, accessible. Um, that's why it was able to penetrate the market that way. Okay, you you asked me the question and you have given some of the answers. Thank you for that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I have to build. I have to build on what you you just said. But just that you know that. Um, it is not an easy job to wrestle the big multinational corporates in this drink yeah. industry in Nigeria. They have the war chest and they have the structures. Where company okay. they did not only own the outlet and the distributorship chains, they also own glass mm. factories. Where mm. glasses, mm. The mm. glasses are produced, where the chillers, refrigerators that you give to the customers and the distributors were produced. So for you to survive in such, um, call it, uh, it might call it oligopolistic or duopolistic, duopolistic market mm. where there are two big kings ruling the entire industry in Nigeria, CSD. For you to survive in such an arena, you have to employ unconventional tactics. Unconventional tactics mm. from innovation to your yeah. route to market structure to your your marketing strategy to the way you do your things. So apart from mm. the fact that um, La Casera innovated against the competitive advantage of the big multinational, because their competitive mm -hmm. advantage is the glass bottle, you can produce enough glass as they could produce. They have glass mm. factory. So yeah. if you want to enter into this business, you will actually produce your glass from their own glass factory. They can shut you down. Oh. You understand? Yeah. So, so yeah. they own the glass factory. They own the 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 the, the several uh, chains of uh, outlets and the rest where they operate. Yeah. So you have to be very unconventional. And that being unconventional <laughs> comes with the innovation to put this yeah. liquid in a pet bottle where you will not have mm. constraint of glass. So you can always produce the amount of drinks you want to produce as mm. demanded by the consumer without being constrained. That is one. Yeah. Then two, yeah. because again, we do not have the kind of media budget that they will have oh. to outcompete mm. them in the media mm -hmm. space in, by way mm -hmm. of advertising and uh, you know all manner of experiential activations. You need yeah. to adopt alternative marketing, and mm. alternative marketing in this case is very unconventional. Unconventional mm. in the sense that you look at the channels with which there are opportunity space in those channels that your competitor is not leveraging. So, like I said, I came into the market, they adopted the hawker's channel, the hawking mm. channel, and that is what they put the ubiquito, when you now start seeing it everywhere in trade. And then, in their humble nature, you know, they adopted mm. hawker's channel, make this product available to the consumer at every point, at everywhere, and at every, every occasion. Yeah. 
No, no. Yeah. Because it's all yeah. about the refreshment. Make the refreshment on the go. You understand? So yeah. that becomes one of the channels. And then you see a lot of massive sampling, road shows, and all manner of things that even the big multinational corporates could not do. Because again, so many of them will look at it and say, no, our brand is premium. Our brand is international. You don't devalue an international premium <laughs> brand by doing this kind of roadside activation, dancing yeah, and organizing <laughs> on the road and doing sampling, giving away free samples because it is premium, it is well known, it has been established since 1900 and 19 this and that, so we have gone yeah. way beyond this <laughs> level of marketing production. So, like I said, I took it yeah. up and then, you know, little, little um, low-hanging fruits by adopting alternative uh, marketing strategy and then they created a lot of penetration and uh, gathered a lot of uh, brand love and most importantly, satisfying consumers on the go. Mm. I see. I see. So, um, it's very interesting because it just shows that you had a lot of challenges at the beginning with the big brands, but you just had to look for alternative, unconventional ways to beat them. And at the end of the day, they also came and joined you because I know that... Um, like you said, um, like I said, I introduced the pet bottles. Now everybody is producing pet bottles in Nigeria now. And when you say penetrating the market, using hawkers and uh, people in traffic to sell the drinks, uh, before then, like you rightly mentioned, I have to agree, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they were seen as premium. But I would also say kudos to you guys, because even though you adopted that route, you still looked for a way to maintain the... Uh, personality of your brand so you you can't say la casera is um, a local brand you still have found a way yeah. to make it look premium with the packaging and all of that and you adopted that mass market approach to selling but still maintained the premium quality of your product so i think that's commendable that's nice and it actually shows the big guys that it could be done so they started adopting your style. So that's that's really interesting. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this interview because I knew that you, 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 your, your company had a lot of um, things that they started in the market and it's always good when you are an original in the market. So my next question is what a lot of people have always been wondering. La Casera and Gala. They became, <laughs> they became a or a love combo, let me put it that way. Uh, uh, the consumers made it so, but I wanted to know if there was any sort of uh, marketing that you did to actually make sure that that happened, or if there was like an agreement or a partnership between the Casera and Gala, I don't know, a joint promotion or something. You know, tell us, how did this thing happen? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there was no, there was no agreement between mm. Gala mm. and Sarah uh, to be in any combo uh, marketing strategy. There was never okay. any agreement. What you see was <laughs> a coincidence, a coincidence oh, wow. orchestrated by by the same uh, route to market or what I call the same hawking channel. Remember that I said yeah. before. Lacatera was one of the pioneer or the pioneer uh, pet mm -hmm. bottle in Nigeria. And not only that, it pioneered pet in Nigeria, it, the pet it gave it the convenience of being sold even on the traffic. I remember people has been hawking gala on traffic and they will still hawk gala on traffic and they are still hawking gala on traffic. So imagine yeah. at that time, when Gala okay. is being hawked in the traffic and the only soft drink apart from water because then mm. people also hawk pure water on traffic. So yes. pure water seems yes. to be the only refreshment people get on traffic when all the TSD brands are on bottle, returnable glass bottle. So when La Casera yes. came in with a pet bottle, it complemented the hawkers who are hawking water. So they now have water 
and Lacatera. And then the people who are hawking gala are hawking gala. People kind of like preferred taking Lacatera with gala instead of taking gala with water. Because yeah. that is what was available on that hawking channel as at that initial early stage when pet bottle was introduced in Nigeria. And truth be told, the combination of Lacassera and Gala seems to go down well with every consumer who have tested the combo. So because the two were put in that channel that is reachable on the go to the consumers, they seems to be very complementary to each other. And then it looks like there is a combo. There is no combo. It's just a mere coincidence that is created by the opportunity within that hawking panel at the initial stage. People still take uh, gala with uh, Coca-Cola, they take gala with Pepsi, but their first love was gala with Lacassera because that is what they knew first. And as a result of Lacassera's uh, first in the pet bottle uh, uh, space and where they provided the on-the-go refreshment. So that seems to bring the two brands very close. But there was no uh, formal uh, agreement or uh, relationship to say, okay, uh, like I said, and, and uh, Gala must go. Otherwise, you would have been seeing a lot of promotions like uh, buy two or buy three Gala and get one like I said, free. But, but or buy two, two like said, and get one Gala free. Out, sorry, when you found out that mm -hmm they were now a pair and the consumers made it so because of the opportunities you created. Why didn't La Casera milk it? Milk it? Why didn't you call Gala and have an agreement and come up with Because I thought it would have been very dope. Why wasn't that a thing? Linda, you don't need a mirror to look at what is in your palm. Do you understand? You don't need a mirror. If you already okay. see that a brand is complimentary, People, they ask for Gala, they get Lacatera. I mean, why do you want to sweat an outfit for something that is already very complimentary that people always love to have? And then at the same time, this, these brands were produced by two different companies. So with yeah. two different leadership, two different management. So you don't, because there are also issues around co-branding, you know? where a brand attaches itself to the other brand, if there are issues very negative about one, it will affect the other. So if the companies are companies that are uh, a B2B company or they are companies within the same fold or within the same group, you said it is easy to strike such a chord. But because they are different companies, everyone wants to keep their individuality. And then at the same time, because if tomorrow people start saying anything negative about La Casera, and we have built that uh, strong association with Gala, it may affect Gala. And if tomorrow people start saying something very strong and negative about Gala, it might affect La, La Casera if there is a deliberate joint brand building on these two brands. So I think the management of both companies per time decided to just leave the love between these two brands on the street and just let it be within the consumers who love them and not trying to create a, a combo marketing strategy for the two brands. Okay. I totally understand your point of view, especially in Nigeria where everybody is scared. Like today, today you might be doing well, tomorrow you never know what might happen. But I still think that there should have been, even not, even even if you don't decide to build the brands together, it's once in a while, once in a blue moon, you know, because not for any reason, but just for the fact that the consumers want it and they love it and you just want to satisfy them. And then increase sale, your sales in a particular period of time. I saw that you did something, like I said, I did something earlier this year. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was during Valentine. You created an ad, and <laughs> in the advice, you were trying to woo a certain G baby. Uh, I thought it was mm -hmm. cute. I thought it was creative. But I was surprised when um, 
Gala responded negatively. I think they left a comment on your post then saying that, oh, we're not a part of this and blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> uh, so I saw that at least um, Bakasera tried, you know, to extend the hand of friendship to Gala simply because, you know, people love the brands together. Um, so how, was, how did you guys take the response from Gala then? Did you expect that sort of response and how did you handle the whole situation? Now you are getting you are getting back to the initial question that you asked before, and uh, yeah. that is that is me and my team trying to test the waters because we know the consumer told us and we know that the two brands yeah. go together, and then yeah. as, as much as we may not have a combo sales strategy or combo marketing strategy we decided to do yeah. a digital banter that is that you see yeah. overseas. Mercedes Benz and the BMW, they banter. Volvo and the rest, they do digital banter. So we decided to yes. do yes. a digital banter, yes. you know, to create a kind of uh, a strong uh, digital resonance that uh, have never been in Nigeria where brands banter with brands. You understand? during the during yes. the valentine period so the intention was to have a mutual benefit for both uh, lacasera and gala that would take gala, up yeah. all the conversation during the february 14 valentine's day so it becomes oh what a lovely thing uh lacasera uh you know trying to woo gala to be a valentine or this and that you know it will create a lot of uh, sensation on, on Twitter, on, on, on social media. Yes, so yes. We, we design it with no intention to hurt any brand. And then we, we extended a hand of friendship to, to Gala. So if things like digital banter, they, they turned us down, then you could imagine <laughs> what could have happened if we want to talk about uh, sales, sales or marketing strategy together. So we attended um, uh, but it could the hands of maybe because they were taken on unawares. Linda, they right. were not taken on unawares. If you had told them before what, you did it. No, what I, I have to say this to put the record straight: the the guys in yeah. UAC were aware, fully aware, of yeah. the digital banter mm. plan when we when we designed mm. it. And we finished designing mm. it, and it was for mutual purpose, for mutual benefit. I reached out to the mm. marketing director. I reached out mm. to the marketing director in US to say, "Look, we have a very strong uh, Valentine campaign for La Casera that and for Gala that will make these two brands mm. to trend and take up the trend yeah. trending." in the rule of that February 14, because no brands have done it in the Nigerian marketing space. So we have this. I shared with them what we designed. So in sharing with them what we designed, I said, this will make these two brands good. Because, yes, we might deny the fact that we don't want to cooperate together, but consumers love us together. So let's even yeah. start building some, some relationship from a digital point of view. And then we can take it further if the two management agrees. And then I shared mm -hmm. with them the, the creative that we did. And then they came back and said, sorry, we don't want any relationship. We don't want any association with the Laka Sera. And then we are already at the point of push button because we've created it and we thought it's going to yeah. be good. And that was why when we changed the world, because the initial world yeah. that was on that creative was Gala. So we have to change oh. it and put it as debate. Oh. You know, to, to avoid issues of uh, legal yeah. issues. We, we became courageous about it and we said we're going to push it. Irrespective of the fact mm. that they don't want it, but yeah. we have to do it right in such a way that there won't be any legal issues. So we took out mm. the name and then we, repre we represented the name with a G-Babe. And then we pushed it. So when we, we when we then now pushed it, through to type, they went to our social media space mm -hmm. and then uh, put up a disclaimer all in caps. 
And because <laughs> they did that, we we love to respect brands and their opinions. So we did not, we yeah. should assault, we didn't do anything. Because the intention okay. was not to fight, the intention yeah. was not to malign, the intention yeah. was to build a mutual, you know, a beneficial relationship between the two brands that the consumers already know that they go together. Yeah. So when they rejected yeah. our move, then we, we shit our sword. But then we still got the value we wanted. The brand trended within the period. Yeah. Oh, well, it's good for you to have clarified that because I was a bit like skeptical about why they would react the way they did because I felt like, okay, I actually posted it and I blasted them saying, oh, no, but this is not nice. These people are trying to create a, a fun campaign that, you know, two brands would have come together, it would have been fun. Just like you said, the, the car brands abroad, they do it. So why can't we do it in Nigeria? Yep. I was really disappointed. So, but later I felt, oh, maybe if they had reached out to them, maybe it would have been a different case. But now finding out that you actually tried reaching out to them and they still turned it down, I don't know what to say. Let's just move we, on. We, <laughs> yeah. we did reach out. We reached out, we shared the creatives. We told them the benefit wow. that both brands stands to gain. And then mm. we, I asked the, I, I don't want to mention her name, but she's the woman that's the marketing director. So I, 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 got, I, got, I got on the phone, I spoke to her on the phone. I shared the benefit, I shared the creative with her. And then she came mm. back and told me that, look, if you guys put this thing up, we are going to put a strong disclaimer. So, and I was like, look, we can use because uh, you're going to put a disclaimer. We are, we are bold and we are fearless. We are, we are, you know, we are like a sort of team. This is a new crop of uh, marketeers working in this company. Yeah. We know what yeah. to do. This banter happen abroad. The only thing is that we yeah. have to do it within the confine of regulatory framework. We need to do it within the confine yeah. of law so that we don't defame your brand. And then we, we went ahead and we pushed it. And then they went ahead and they put a disclaimer. If we wanted to defend the brand, or if we wanted to be naughty and do something silly, we would have, the moment a G babe turned us down, would have made a, would have shoot a shot to another, another sausage roll, another sausage brand. And then yeah. I can tell you, maybe if that sausage brand have accepted, people would throw them even harder than they did in the first instance. So, but we looked at it and then we said, no, the intention was not to defend. The intention was to build a mutual relationship that would yeah. get the two brands friendly. And because uh, La Capera and Gala, I mean, there's no body that you would tell that these brands are in love that you say no. So we yeah. needed to create that kind of uh, appeal and resonance among the, you know, the marketing community so people can see how brand, banters with brand, during a uh, Valentine, like you see what Valentine. happens in abroad. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't get it. So we let it be. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's a sign. Um, so um, congratulations so far with what you've been doing with the brand. Um, I hear you guys are making close to like a billion bottles of 50 CL a year. That's pretty huge. Compared to the other big brands, how would you say La Casera is faring in the markets in terms of production and market share? We are faring well, um, faring well in terms of the targets we set for ourselves. Because okay. in this case, it may not be right and appropriate to compare yourself with the big multinational. Everyone has a target. Everyone knows what defines success for them. Okay. Again, because uh, the Carbonate soft drink space is made up of different flavors. So within the apple flavor where we play, we're doing well. Uh, okay. the, the big FMCG guys only recently started venturing into the apple space with the Mirinda, a green and a red apple. And then you have uh, the different... Um, the Biggie Apple, and then you have uh, the RP Apple. You, you know, there are so many Apple products coming into the space. Yeah. So within the, yeah. the space that we play, we, we hold our side very tight. And then we are also the uh, 
Chapman choice of the of the consumers with our smooth Chapman. So we hold that uh, flavor category very strong. And then um, yeah. we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. We are back on the beat and um, expect more from us. Okay. Um, great. So um, one more thing I want to talk about. So you're currently running a an advertising campaign right now. We're going to talk about it soon. Uh, but what I want to talk about now is uh, what I know I posted your adverts, the new one you just did, the spoken one, the spoken word um, ad. And I compared it to that of Coca-Cola. Sorry, I have to mention yeah, Coca-Cola because we did something similar. <laughs> yeah, so I compared it with Coca-Cola. And what you did was pretty good. But what I noted when I was doing that review was that um, Coca-Cola, for me, has been able to define what their videos are like. Their videos are meant to, or maybe say their ads are meant to always put a smile on the face. They are always meant to generate this feeling of happiness in the minds of the consumers and anybody that sees it. So we already know their directing style. We already know their, their how do I put it? Yeah, we already know what they plan to do whenever they drop any piece of ad. So we know what that ad is supposed to be. We know the brand identity just by looking at the video. Mm -hmm. So what I noticed is that for La Casera, I don't think that's for me, or I, and um, I hope you'll be able to Correct yeah, no, no. I don't think La Cassera yeah. has been able to define what their brand is right now, especially when it comes to advertising. You know why? Because if I, I, I went through all your ads, and I can see that each ad is kind of different. Each ad has a different appeal. So the only constant thing for me is maybe the brand color and uh, the payoff line. Every other thing is different. So I'm still trying to figure out what is La Cassera's directional style what is the mood they try to create with every ad they put out what is that thing that they stand for you know so those little brand identity for me i think it's not consistent in all of your um creative material do you agree with me yes i agree with you and um i okay. can tell you why i agree we okay. deconstructed the brand and we're rebuilding Okay. We are rebuilding the brand. If you oh. notice, in the last uh, five, six years, there haven't been any strong uh, TV commercial for the La Casera okay. brand. Okay. Right? So, uh, when I came on board in December 2018, the first okay. major work that I did with the team is to start to redefine the brand positioning for the La Casera mm. brand. What should this brand stand for in the minds of the consumers? What is the okay. essence? What is the DNA? What does mm -hmm. the brand mm -hmm. represent in mm -hmm. plus in the way that it is communicated? So we started building. And um, okay. I, can, I can tell you that part of what we are doing now is part of the building process. And okay. it won't be long. It will be clear what the direction the brand is heading to. But I can, I can, I, I will tell you you're right. But then the brand is still a mass market brand with a premium appeal and is a brand made in the street by the street and for the street. There can't be any king of the street better than La Casera. Mm. So La Casera mm. always stands for those virtues that represents the hustling Nigerian man or woman, that represents mm. the interest of an average Nigerian who go out there in the morning to hustle and retire back to his home in the evening. So he represents okay. the entrepreneurial spirit of the average Nigerian. So this is the tenets with which we are building this brand. And you will see it in our further communication because everything that we're doing today is taking the interest of the man on the street at heart. And that is why when organizations were making big donations, doing all the things that they were doing, we chose our heroes for the Lakasara heroes, people who we know are the heroes of COVID, who are fighting this real fight for, for the okay. life of others. So you okay. will see the direction that we are going. And those inspired the, the, the poetry 
or the, the video that you saw that you compared with Coca-Cola, I saw the review and I said, okay, uh, I get the point where you are reviewing it from, but it might also be interested if you know from the point where we crafted that communication, what led to that communication. So we are not in conflict with Coca-Cola. We are not doing their direction. We have first and foremost uh, put up a program that we call the Lacassera Heroes where we rewarded people, genuine people who are fighting to keep all of us alive, healthcare workers and all other people who are not even healthcare workers, but they are contributing significantly in the fight against COVID. They put their life on yeah. the line to save the life of others. We rewarded them. And then after we rewarded them, we now asked ourselves, we did some uh, uh, still videos uh, that we, we have been showing where we, 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 in a campaign, we called it not a full stop. It is just a pause. So we played back different locations that people have been in since this COVID. People who have fixed their wedding on April 7th, who could not have that yeah. wedding because there was a lockdown. So you see a lady with her gown. So we have different scenarios. The students who cannot go back to school because the schools were shut down. The entrepreneur, the market man or the trader who could not go back to his shop because the shop are locked down. So we kind of like gave some insight of how people have been able to navigate through this COVID from having your shop locked down to moving your business online. And then from having physical contact in school to stop as a result of lockdown from to people moving schools online. And then we played this video and yeah. it's still playing on most of the LED board. This is us getting into the heart of the consumers to pick some of their engagement, some of the occasions that they were affected by this COVID-19. Now that we've done that, we cannot say with exactitude that we have represented all the interest that has been affected by lockdown and by COVID-19. So it is now for us to give the consumers an opportunity to tell us how Experience they were themselves. affected by this covid and how they are moving on. And that was what inspired that poetry that we did with uh, Hawa, uh, Hua, that we, did, uh, that we did to ask the consumers, now we've tried as much as possible to get into your life and x-ray some of the areas where you were affected. Now, tell us, it will be good to hear from you how you have been affected by COVID, what are the things that you put on hold, what are the things that have stand as a barrier? And how are you overcoming? Because the brand is about fun, is about excitement, is about energy, is about you know representing the interest of the common man on the street. So we also latch yeah. on the common uh, common phrase that the people are using to encourage themselves. You know, they, you see these plants, we move, we move, we move. And then we said, okay, these are our people. Tell us how you have been surviving this COVID and how you are moving on. And then that was what inspired that video. And up to now, we are getting entries coming in, people telling their stories, and they will surely be rewarded for those whose entry made it to the court. So those are the things that, that led to our direction of where we are going, but not necessarily trying to copy. We, we don't copy in this team. We, we try as much as possible to be original in what we're doing. But you know that ideation and ideas doesn't reside in just one individual. Of course, I know. I know that, which is why I specifically didn't say you copied. I said it is similar, which is why most times I always tell people before you come up with something, do a quick scan, find out if somebody else has done something similar because we cannot close our eyes to it if we see that it's similar. But knowing the background yeah. of where you're coming from now, I totally understand. And I know that if you had not gotten so far with the production, I'm sure there might have been some tweaks 
to make sure that, especially because, you know, it's a competing brand. But that's story for another day. Yeah. I think we have almost exhausted our one hour. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel. I want to tell you that from this conversation, I have really understood the brand like Acerara as at where it is right now and where it's going. And I want to commend you and let you know that we are still here. We'll be watching and then we'll see how the brand goes. Because right now the brand is known. The brand is loved. So this now is for you to move it to the next level in terms of branding, in terms of communication and in terms of yeah. making people understand really what the essence of the brand is and i know that you're up to the task 19 years in the business is not been <laughs> so thank you very much um i'm going to take thank one you. question because i think there's somebody that left a question for you but before i do that um let okay. me talk to the audience you guys thank you so much for watching and know that we are going to be giving out some goodies from la casera so i'm going to go back through this video and watch most of the people that were commenting leaving um, comments and engaging and all of that so from there i'm going to pick the winners of the cases of La Casera and all the branded products that they are giving, uh, giving out to us today. So let me take that question. I asked you guys to write your questions in the question tab. So, oh, someone is asking, Mr. Emmanuel, someone is asking how they can get um, La Casera in Dubai. Is that possible? Um, we have to check with our export, uh, export team. Nothing is impossible. If if the margins are right and the terms of trade are favorable, then it's possible. But if the margins okay. are not right and the terms of favorable is harsh, then nobody does goes goes into a business with intention to do it. Mm. Okay. Because I know you how, are... how, how big how big is the market? So is is something okay. that uh, that requires um a lot of uh, background information in understanding mm. what is the size of the prime in Dubai market. What are the legal constraints? What are the the yeah. terms of trade and uh, stuff like that? And then, if we found it uh, uh, very lucrative, why not? We're in business. Okay, so there's another question by Dayo. Dayo is asking. What is La Casera's conversion strategy to drive demand and appeal to customers? I know you have touched on this before, but I think you can just do a quick recap so that Dio can get the message. Question is, what is La Casera's conversion strategy to drive demand and appeal to customers? We have done so many things in the past and we will keep on doing them because one of the things that we, we did Last year was the first time we did um, under the Crown Cup promotion, which was the first of its kind. It had okay. never happened with a pet, a pet, a pet bottle in Nigeria, where you put prices under the pet cap, and then um, you drive a consumer experience that uh, leads to conversion of of, of the product. Mm. So, and there are other so many uh, trade promotions that we put in place, but then COVID happened. And then the whole uh, <laughs> plan started uh, changing overnight. So, uh, yeah. it, again, it will, it will also not be wise and nice of me in, in, a, in a, a webinar session like this or in an Insta Live like this to come and start telling people this is my strategy in what I want to do <laughs> on the brand, knowing that uh, I don't yeah. even know who works for who in the people that are listening to me, but we have um, a stronger yeah. below the line and above the line a strategy to drive conversion. And we're doing that because what we are noticing now, the phenomenal growth that we're noticing now shows that all the conversion plan and strategy that we're putting in place are working and we're getting the right consumers okay. on the brand. Okay, great. Uh, like I said, we're looking forward to it. La Casera is known, is loved. What is next? What is the next thing for La Casera? Um, I know Jotna is huge. You have you have other brands under your portfolio. I think you already mentioned them. The smooth, uh, bold ginger. That's the first ever ginger drink in the market, right? There's bold ginger. Yeah. There's another one. You have a couple of brands in the market. Um, before we round up, maybe you can quickly in like two... 
three seconds. Tell us about, if it's possible, tell us about these other brands and how they are faring in the market. And how big are you in Africa? Mm -hmm. um, you're exporting outside of Nigeria, I think. Yeah. Okay. In all together, we have nine brands. But I don't know many. We are, yeah, we have nine brands, six PSD brand and three three water brands. We are the makers of a Nirvana Premium okay. Table Water. So we have Nirvana Premium Table okay. Water, we have Nirvana Soda Water, and we have Nirvana Tonic Water. So our water okay. is arguably one of the best water in, in Lagos and in, in this country. And I can tell you, I, I don't, it's not, it's not a marketing thing. Okay. So, Outside that, we have uh, six uh, CSD brands. Like I said, I swan and uh, Smooth, Smooth Chapman, arguably the number one and the best Chapman drink in Nigeria. And then we have uh, the Bold Four. We call them the Bold Four because they came in at once. We have the Bold uh, Ginger, we have the Bold Tropical, we have the Bold uh, Orange, and then we have the Bold Bitter Lemon Extra. So four brands from the Bold franchise, and then uh, Lacacera and Smooth, making it six CSD brands and three, okay. three brands of water. So those are the oh, brands okay. that we have. And in line with our philosophy, we always like to pioneer something very new and very different in the market. While the copycat will keep on copying so we don't have a problem with that, <laughs> the same way we came with the first Apple product in Nigerian marketing space before other people started mm -hmm. copying Apple. We also came in with a very strong uh, Chapman drink in the market, arguably the best tasting Chapman in Nigeria, and it has been copied by others. We don't have a problem. We also came in now with the first ginger carbonated soft drink in Nigeria. We are waiting for the copy <laughs> to come out so that we know how best they have copied it. But uh, our innovation philosophy is to be there to be different. We do things very differently in our little way. And then we differentiate ourselves from the, from the mammoth crowd in the things that we do. And that is what makes us who we are. And that is what has been sustaining the company and the brand up to this day because we are very different in our approach to things. Okay, Mr. Agu, thank you so much. I had fun watching. Thank you very much for your for your time. Um, I hope you. uh, I hope the audience have been able to learn something from you guys today. Innovation, innovation, innovation. It is the key to making it in the market anywhere. Like who would have thought that La Cacera would be going head on with other big soft drink brands, even to the fact that they are now even copying La Cacera. Uh, that shows that innovation is key, so everybody should learn, and then everybody should try as much as possible. Every brand should try as much, much as possible to put the, um, the target in mind whenever they are coming up with their products and their marketing strategy. I still cannot forget what you said about convenience, which was one of the reasons why it was easy for La Cacera to penetrate into the market, even without the big budget adverts. Like you said, you didn't have any adverts because you could not compete with how, if, even if you say, okay, let me even do my adverts. By the time you put one, Coke and Pepsi will come and pump money in it. And before you know, yeah. your own message is drowned. So yes, your unconventional ways worked and i'm so so happy that um i had to have this conversation with you today and i hope that a lot of people will learn from it so thank you so much mr emmanuel and you guys thank, thank you. you for joining us <laughs> yes um you guys thanks for joining us like i said i'm going to go through this video again and i'm going to pick my winners from people who have been engaging with the post and asking questions and you know generally just being part of the whole interview and we're going to pick our winners and 10 of you are going to get 10 cases of La Cacera from Mr. Emmanuel and his team, right? And then we also have some other branded um, goodies for you as well. I'll post the winners on my page after this interview. So any last words, Mr. Emmanuel? Do you have any other thing you want to say to your fans or to me before we go? <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, not not actually a last word because I'm not dying yet. But uh, <laughs> just to also say, <laughs> keep doing the good work that you're doing. I've been I've been following you for uh, 
close to two years now, I, I, I guess. And I've been seeing all the brand reviews and the rest. Oh, and when I see them, I go, I go to the comment section, I read the comments, I laugh, I pick my learning because <laughs> there are so many unconventional ways that you can get feedback on your brand. So yeah. uh, thumbs up for the work you are doing. Keep, keep doing the great work. And then to the yeah. viewers who have listened to us today, uh, there's a lot to learn in terms of uh, brand management. You don't need a whole war chest in terms of massive uh, advertising and promotional budget to build a brand. All what you need is creativity. Creativity, creativity with a little yeah. bit of budget. You can, you can do a lot of things. You see how um, brands and communication migrated into Facebook, uh, uh, Team, Zoom, Insta Live, and the rest during COVID. And uh, these are all um, inexpensive uh, channels yeah. with which people can be reached. So it, it, for every brand person that have listened to me this day, keep on working hard, keep on reading, keep on exposing yourself, identify the gaps you have, and then cover it up with training, and then mm. get yourself better and better. The opportunity is still there, you know? And keep on drinking La Catera. If you, if, if you, if you don't drink La Catera, drink me. If you don't drink me, drink ginger. If you don't drink ginger, drink Nirvana water. You have no excuse not to drink any of our brands. We have you covered across board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. You have really shown that you are really a marketer. <laughs> the way you just marketed all your brands right now. All right, so thank you. It was nice speaking to you. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. See you some other time. Okay, bye. Thank you. Yeah.